Hello and welcome back. In the previous video, we did a horizontal analysis of 2019 versus 2018 where sales were increasing. Now we are doing an analysis of 2020 versus 2019 where sales are decreasing. If you haven't seen the previous video, I recommend you watch that video and then come back to this video. So we will analyze the variances or changes in amounts and percentages in order to calculate the change in dollar amounts. We will start with the most recent financial numbers and subtract the previous year's financial numbers from it, which gives us our change or increase or decrease in our total revenue. As you can see here, we see a decrease of $4.3 billion. To calculate the percentage change, you can simply take the difference and divide it by the previous year. It's important to use the previous year in your comparison because that becomes your reference point not the current year. So we go back to 2019, we'll divide it by the sales or revenue of 2019, and this gives us a percentage of minus 11%. So we saw an increase in 2019 of 17% in revenue, and now in 2020, we are seeing a decrease of 11% in revenue. Just to highlight that 2020 was a year of COVID, so many organizations saw a drop in revenue and that could explain part of this drop as well. But for the time being, we will focus on the numbers and we can see a drop in revenue of 11%. I can now copy these formulas all the way down to EBITDA. If I want to keep my formatting, there is a shortcut. I can use Alt, H, V, and F. And you can see that it has copied all the formulas down, but also it has kept my formatting wherever I had the numbers bold. You see the bold numbers there. So what do we see in this horizontal analysis? We see drop in revenue of 11%. We see a drop in cost of 8%. Now this is beginning to become a little bit more of a problem because in the previous analysis, when we were looking at 2019 versus 2018, we saw that the revenue increased and the cost increased by a higher percentage. Now in 2020, we are seeing that the revenue has decreased, but the cost has not decreased at the same level. So in both these two years, we are continuing to see an increase in cost of revenue and a drop and a decrease in gross profit. If I do a gross profit percentage calculation, I am pretty sure I will see a continuous trend of drop. So let's do that quickly. So this goes back to vertical analysis a little bit. So to calculate gross profit margin, I take the gross profit and divide it by our revenue. And you see in 2018, the gross profit margin was 63%. Now when I copy it over to 2019 and 2020, you see a steady decline now. So from 63%, it went down to 61%, and now it is at 59%. So again, more questions on the cost of revenue here. Do not forget the comment about change in mix though. Sometimes the change in mix could result in higher costs. But now we are seeing that over a period of two years. So it's becoming a little more problematic in this case. And considering this is uh, not a great year as far as revenue growth is concerned. So the gross profit has also dropped by 3 billion. So while last year the shareholders or owners got 2.6 billion more in gross profit. This year, the drop is even higher. When we look at operating expenses, however, we see that in 2019, the increase is 1.8 billion, which is 18%, slightly above your revenue uh, revenue growth. Ideally, it should be less than the revenue growth, but really depends on the circumstances. It looks like a good turnaround. Sales has dropped by 11% in 2020. The operating expenses have decreased by 19%. So that's a good sign. That means that the company did focus on managing on managing its operating expenses and have brought them down, which will ultimately help improve the profitability a little bit, considering that the year was a lower revenue year anyway. So you see the impact here on operating income as well. Despite a drop in revenue of 11%, the operating income has dropped only by 7%. Again, the interest expense, as we mentioned in the previous video, does not directly relate to the increase or decrease in revenue. So we cannot really look at revenue percentage and make a judgment on interest expense. It really depends on the 
financial liabilities or loans that the company has acquired, it looks like a significant jump here because in 2020, the interest expense has gone up to 1.4 billion compared to 946 million last year. So it looks like the company is has secured more financing, interest-bearing financing, and it's generally not a good sign, but again, we'll have to look at the circumstances of this transaction. Other income and expenses, we see uh, an increase in other income of uh, net other income of 356 million. So that's a good sign. That's also positive to the EBITDA or profitability of the organization. Let's look at the income tax expenses again. So again, this one does not necessarily link to the revenue, but it does link to your income before taxes. So again, if we calculate the income tax expense at a higher level from income before taxes, the percentage we get to would be tax expense divided by income before taxes. So 20% for 2020 and it is higher than both 2018 and 2019. So taxes are not helping this year in 2020. Taxes are higher as a percentage. And you can see finally the impact on EBITDA, which is $375 billion lower than 2019. Now, this is where uh, utilizing vertical analysis with horizontal analysis comes into play. You see that the drop in revenue was 4.2 billion, but the impact on EBITDA is only 375 million. So the company did well in managing, especially its operating expenses and also some favorable net other income. So the impact of the drop of revenue was somewhat restricted. And you can see that in the overall EBITDA number here, in that although you see a drop in your EBITDA from 13 billion to 12.7 billion, but if you look at your EBITDA margin, it has actually gone up to 39% compared to 35%. So looking at the year, starting with low revenue, the company has done relatively well compared to 2019 as far as managing its costs is concerned. However, I would still look at the cost of revenue we see a declining trend here. We see that the cost of revenue is getting higher as a percentage of total revenue, which is resulting in a lower gross profit margin on a continued basis. Now, if you're interested in looking at the details of the financial statements of Coca-Cola, you can actually go to their website. And on their website, you can go to the financial info section and click on financial results. And you will see their results. And there is some good analysis that they have put together. So I did my analysis in Excel before looking at this information, but I was expecting some sort of explanation on the drop in margin. And you can see a margin analysis schedule. And if you click on it, you can actually see their waterfall or bridge chart showing the drop in margin. So in 2019, where their gross margin was 60.8%, and it dropped to 59.3 in 2020, they have actually shown a nice bridge of what happened there. And they do have some explanation as they're saying that the, the negative cross margin is driven by top line pressure due to the pandemic, due to the coronavirus pandemic, along with negative channel and packaging mix. And this is what I was mentioning in my explanation earlier. They also have an explanation of their operating margin. The operating margin actually improved in 2020 compared to 2019. And one of the key factors that they have highlighted is the effective cost management across operating groups. So that's a good exercise. You may want to go to the websites of these publicly listed companies and see what sort of analysis they have presented with the shareholders, with the public in general, to explain their performance year over year. So I hope that you found this analysis of two years useful. And if you did, make sure you hit thumbs up, click like. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, make sure you subscribe as well. Does this help you in any way? I would be interested to know. Thank you very much and bye for now.